What we have here is a reservoir that was uh, put in in the mid-1930s. It's about 80 years old. I've owned the property, uh, started in 1978 when my father died. It comprises a total area now of 600 acres. If you own something, you really have a responsibility to take care of it. And in many parts, with the stone quarrying and the timber that was taken out, it's largely paid me back. What we will see as we go up through here is a blend of the golden wing habitat and the cerulean habitat. This is my South Mountain Road entrance. But as you'll note, as we're walking out there, the forest harvest is still ongoing at this point. These oaks are gonna host a wide variety of uh, insect prey for these insectivorous birds. Not to mention the heterogeneity of the residual trees within the stand creates a really complex uh, landscape that allows for a wide variety of different species. The Baltimore Oriole, looks like maybe a pair. Yeah, there's two of them there. Rose-breasted grosbeak here in the top of this tree here. I was very impressed with the fact that even though, I mean, we have skitters right there, the population of birds right here at the edge currently. There's a bay-breasted on the tree. Three feet up on the left Got side, it. close wow. to the trunk. A lot of these species of birds that are benefiting from the property are pretty desperate for, for habitat. Early successional birds are in decline generally across the board, and that's due to habitat loss. Right. So it makes a lot of sense to me that we're seeing birds respond to this as soon as they can get in here. Right. Here he comes, right on in. I think that there's a very high likelihood that within the next few years, golden wing warblers uh, may actually occur on the site, even if it's not now. If you look in the direction here, you'll see an unmanaged forest. And as we progress up, this is an area, of course, that we've actively managed. The key here is responsible forestry that causes regeneration of the forest, a young forest to be created. If the trees don't regenerate, cutting down trees is harmful to wildlife. But creating a harvest that results in regeneration of the understory, that, that is what these animals need. These, these wild species rely on regenerating forests to complete their life cycle. So this, this timber harvesting creates, it essentially mimics a, a natural disturbance that you might see uh, to regenerate that forest for those species. A lot of Pennsylvania in the past has been high graded, which high grading means that you're taking the best and leaving all the rest. Right. I'm low grading the property. I'm taking out all the low grade material. John is one of our best examples of a forward thinking landowner. Now you've opened up the canopy of all these high quality trees so that they can only grow larger. You've designed it for four different yes. uh, vernal pools within this small area. Yeah. Generally, as I've worked with forest landowners throughout Pennsylvania, I find the majority of the time they're very open to ideas. I mean, they want to improve their land for um, recreation, for wildlife. So what you've done, John, here is essentially created a new ecosystem on your forest land that wasn't here before. They get more and more excited, and I love seeing that process. One of the other things we try to do is take stumps that were taken out to build the pool, put them back in the water just as a, uh, a loafing area. You know, they come back to us with their ideas, and it's a really collaborative effort between, you know, sometimes three and four and five state, local, and federal agencies and the landowner to uh, come up with the best plan for his property. It's a, it's a lot of fun, and it's one of the reasons I really enjoy working for the Natural Resource Conservation Service. Populations of many eastern forest birds have been declining for a long time. And the golden wing warbler is one of those species that has been declining uh, the most significantly. So it's about 6.15 in the morning. We're here in uh, north central Pennsylvania. This is a bird song app. We are going to try and target net some golden wing warblers this morning. This is a male golden wing warbler. So in Pennsylvania, since 2008, we've been studying golden wing warbler breeding ecology in places like this. So the first thing we always do is put our silver USGS leg band on, just like that. The work is being conducted by a series of student uh, field technicians. Uh, 
those studies allow us to develop the science, the recommendations that we use on properties. Learn their territories, understand the vegetation structure of those territories, understand the surrounding landscape conditions. 8.59 boil that stuff down into usable information that landowners can use to manage for golden wing warblers on their property. I really care a lot about the land and, and the creatures that live on it because it's part of my heritage. I grew up on this farm. Now this is a bobcat that we photographed. It was stalking birds right outside our living room window. So early morning, that's really the height of the bird activity. Oh, here comes the morning dove. Yeah. So the morning dove just landed. Ooh, a neat woodpecker just came into the suet tree. It's called a pileated woodpecker. We like to keep track of what birds are in our backyard, and that gives us ideas of what to plant. And as citizen scientists, we know that we're helping with migration studies and, and that kind of thing. What a beautiful day. So this is what we call the woodcock area. It's a two-acre cut. In our 114 acres, we have, it's mostly forested. Rebus is a really good food source for um, songbirds that eat caterpillars. There's lots of caterpillars on oh, okay. yeah. Rebus. We have uh, an area of about 27 to 30 acres that we logged to improve the habitat for golden-winged warblers to uh, attract any species that benefit from the young forest. I wanted to show what the area looked like before the logging took place. The focus is for these songbirds of, of threatened population and, and create that habitat and also do that while we're encouraging sustainable forestry and the diversity because so much of our forests in Pennsylvania have become more of a monoculture. We need to make sure that we're controlling invasive species and encouraging the uh, growth of desirable seedlings. Forested landscapes that have a diversity or a balance of age classes is really what provides the best opportunities to conserve forest wildlife mm -hmm. because we're able to meet the habitat needs of many different species. So you've got that here. This is one of the 25 brush piles that our logger built for us while they were doing the logging. So this one I designed with bears in mind. We're both retired science teachers, and so all of this, everything we see around here, we have a fascination for, and we want to know more about what that insect is and what those plants are and how can we make this even better. I feel that we have an obligation as humans to protect the wildlife that actually sustains us. And so I consider this my little piece of paradise, and I want to protect it as much as I can.